Okay, <clears throat> my name is Xi Shangyan, and today I will talk about the face recognition based on PCA and SVM. Okay, here is, is the outline, and I will introduce the face recognition, the face image preprocessing, the feature extraction based on PCA, the face classification and the recognition based on SVM, and the method of simulation, future work, and the conclusion. First of all, I will introduce the face recognition. The traditional method to identify person is not safe and convenient such as the ID card and code. So we are able to utilize the biometric technology to resolve this problem. This technology can take advantage of unique uh, physiological or behavioral features such as the face, fingerprint, arrays, DNA, or gaze to solve the problem. But today I will only talk about the face recognition because this technology uh, have these three, uh, uh, three advantages. Uh, no invasion, no local uh, low cost and easy to install, and the high accuracy makes it enough to be utilized in our daily, daily life. And in this chapter, I will talk about the face image uh, preprocessing because it's very important. The influence of light condition and the performance of equipment led to the existence of noise and the lack of contrast ratio. So uh, also, in the size and position of face cannot be determined because of the distance and uh, focal length. So in order to overcome this problem and to make, make the image quality consist, consist to, to improve the accuracy, the preprocessing is necessary. Okay, I will talk about four methods about the preprocessing. The first one is the histogram uh, equalization. Okay, from the figure, we know that the green value of original image is more focused. Okay, here it's more focused, and therefore the contrast ratio is not good. After the case of ground equalization, the green value is redistributed, and the range of, okay, here is redistributed, and uh, the range of his ground become larger, which means the sink area will be stretched and the sparse area is compressed. So the contrast ratio is improved and the image become clearer. The second method is green stretch. <clears throat> this method is to transform the green value of each pixel into another kind of green value according to a certain mapping method. So we are able to give a new green value of each pixel to enhance the contrast ratio of image. So from this image, we know <clears throat> that the contrast ratio of process image uh, is improved and the details are clearer. The third, the third method is the median filter. <clears throat> this method is to sort the green value of pixel according to the green level and to utilize the median of green scale to replace the green value of a certain pixel. So analyzing the um, figure, we know that the green value after median filtering uh, become closer with each other, and therefore the noise is able to surprise uh, is able to surprise effectively. Also, the process image doesn't generate obvious blurry. Okay, this <clears throat> the first method is the homomorphic filtering. This method is to transform the uh, is to to transform the brightness model of product form into additivity. In order to achieve the, filtering, uh, achieve the filtering enhancement, the light intensity of image and the intensity of reflected light will be changed. So we are able to reduce the dynamic range of, of image and enhance the contrast ratio in the meantime. Uh, through analyzing this figure, we, we know that the contrast ratio is improved and uh, several dark areas become clearer. Okay, then I will, uh, I will talk about the feature extraction based on PCA. So in order to achieve the uh, feature extraction, uh, two principles should be followed. The first one is that we should remove the correlation of, of face image as much as possible and reduce the dimension of face image to simplify the calculation. And, this, and, the, third, and the second principle is that the most obvious difference information between different phase should be kept. Okay, here is the fundamental principle of PCA. We just suppose X is the vector size that consists of n-dimensional sample vector X of I and 
then the mean value of x is equal to 1. Uh, then we get the difference uh, value between each vector and the mean value, and uh, so we get the equator 2. And the vector covariance matrix of vector D is equal to 3. And uh, we utilize F matrix to define a linear transformation and uh, then obtain a new vector size Y. So we get the equation 4. Actually, this, the equation 4 is a KL transform and the vector F is a orthogonal normalization eigenvector of P matrix. And, uh, okay, in the equation 5, we just call the relationship between the uh, covariance matrix Q and, and the P matrix. Since the row vector of I is the eigenvector of P, and uh, the matrix Q is the diagonal matrix of, and the lambda sub I is the eigenvalue of P, so we get the equation, uh, so we get the equation 6. In the Q matrix, the off diagonal value is 0, and therefore each vector in the Y is uncorrelated. So we utilize F matrix to remove the correlation of each vector in the X. We are, we are able to uh, select only previous k uh, eigenvalues according to the country Gaussian ratio and therefore the dimension can be reduced, reduced to the k dimensions. And uh, from what we have discussed, we know that the main calculation amount comes from the, uh, comes from the computation of eigenvalue and eigenvector of, co uh, of covariance matrix. So if the dimension is large, plenty of time has to be consumed. And uh, then, so in order to uh, resolve the problem, I just reintroduced the uh, uh, fast PCA. We just suppose that the n sub n times d matrix consists of sample value in the x sample matrix minus mean value, and uh, then we can the scatter matrix x. Okay, is, the, is this matrix? And uh, then we just introduce a new matrix, is the matrix R. R. And uh, in this matrix, we know that the dimension is n times n, and the generous sample number n is much lower, uh, lower than dimension d. And uh, we just suppose n dimensional column vector b is the eigenvector of our matrix, so we get the equation h. And uh, then we just times z of t in both sides, and uh, we call the equation 9. So from these two equations, uh, we know that we are able to get the eigenvalues of S matrix by computing the eigenvalues of R matrix. So the calculation amount, amount can be reduced effectively. Okay, this figure is just about the 20 eigenphase. And uh, this eigenphase is in the 20 dimensions. Uh, okay, in this, in this chapter, I will talk about the phase classification and the recognition based on the SVL. And uh, first, first line, I will introduce the uh, SVM. SVM is a kind of revenue method based on the principle of uh, st uh, structural risk minimization and has, a, and has the advantage to solve the small, simple, nonlinear, and high dimensional pattern recognition problem. Also, the SVM overcomes the curse of dimensionality and overlearning, and therefore, it's very important to learn about the SVM. The basic idea is then to create the optimal hyperplane in the sample space and make the distance between hyperplane and the sample size uh, maximum. Okay, this plane is just uh, it's just about the hyperplane, and uh, R, e, R is the <coughs> R is the optimal hyperplane, and the R sub one, R sub two. <coughs> Uh, plus the sample closest to L respectively and uh, are parallel to the L. The distance between L sub 1 and L sub 2 is, is called the margin. And uh, the samples on the L sub 1 and L sub 2, okay, is this uh, black uh, circle and the triangle is called the uh, support vector. <coughs> then I, I will talk about the uh, fundamental principle of SVM, and uh, there are three cases. The first one is the linearly separable case. We just suppose that the sample size is uh, as for i as and the y sub i, and then we get the equation term. Actually, equation term is the expression of, of optimal hyperplane, and uh, 
so we can get the expression of L sub 1 and L sub 2 okay is this two equator is the equation 11 and equation 12 okay according to the distance formula between uh, points and the straight line we know that the distance between sample x and optimal hyperplane is uh, uh, is this equation 13 and uh, the denominator is the Euclidean norm of W and uh, then we suppose that the samples on the L sub 1 and L sub 2 sent it from these two folder, uh, these two equations okay and uh, so we cast the equation 14 so in order to find out the maximum margin the Euclidean, uh, Euclidean norm should be minimal and also should meet this uh, this equation 15. This equation 15 is the is the constraint condition. Uh, since the problem to get the maximum this value is equal to get the uh, minimum this value under the constraint condition. So the conditional extremum uh, can be transformed into unconstrained Lagrange optimization, uh, which means we can minimize this uh, this equation, and uh, then we can get the optimal classification function, which is shown in the uh, equation uh, 17. The second case is the linearly inseparable case. In this situation, we can uh, relax the constraint condition of equation 15 and introduce the select variable, and uh, so we get the equation 18. Uh, then add to the penalty parameter C and minimize the objective, objective function, okay, which is shown in this uh, equation 19. The third, case is, the third case is about the kernel function. If we relax the constraint condition too much, many wrong classification will occur. So for nonlinear uh, situation, samples need to be transformed into a high dimensional space where linear, uh, where, where nonlinear transform and uh, then create optimal hyperplane to separate different classes. However, when all samples are mapped into high dimensional space, the calculation amounts will become large. So I introduced the kernel function. The kernel function allows the calculation to be finished in the low dimensional space and uh, then map the results into the high dimension. Okay, we got this uh, equation 20 and equation 21. Uh, which is the constraint condition and the dual op optimization problem respectively. So then we cast the optimal classification function. Okay, it, it is this equation 22. According to the fundamental principle of SVM, we know that SVM is a kind of binary classifier and uh, can distinguish uh, and can distinguish the difference between two classes. However, in the practical application, many classes need to be distinguished. So I will introduce one versus one method, uh, method to solve this multi-class problem. And the average two classes have one corresponding SVM classifier, and therefore we get n times n minus one SVM classifier. In the testing stage, every SVM classifier votes for an unknown sample and records the results of voting. Finally, the class that obtains most votes is the category of unknown sample.